Hello everyone, this is Cypherdeck, and today I am in Scrap Mechanics with AC Gamer. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. And we are just looking for a good spot to uh, start building the thing that we are going to, you know, build. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise, guys. You're going to find out later today what we're doing, but... Um... What are you? What are you really looking for? Like a wide open area in the grassland? Do you want a desert or? I almost want one of those space needles, just because of the fact that um. Actually. Oh, you want to build it like around it? Yeah. I, well, I just want something that's um nice and flat. Although you do get a little bit of lag over there. Last time we tried building our elevator on top of one of those platforms. It uh, didn't like it too much. Yeah, well, kind of, it kind of crashed. We could build right here in this flat area, but before we do, we gotta check out our our vehicle, make sure it uh, can climb some mountains, which it seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, uh, looks like it's about to flip over. I, I got controls. I got <laughs> controls of it. For those of you who are watching on my screen, you see the uh, the jumping back and forth. Oh. That is uh, that is very very common in this game when it comes to multiplayer. Whoever joins the other person's game will get this kind of uh, you know yin yang back and forth kind of uh, you know just pulling for you know formation whatever you want to call this. Yeah. But it's kind of interesting. We like showing it from different points of view because you may have a friend you want to join. Uh, you may have lots of friends who want to come out there and join you. And that red on those wheels, man, it really does depend on the color of the sun coming out. Yep. Let me let me change that real quick. Let me go back to white and see if that will will mean anything when it comes to uh, whether the sun's out or not, if that's just going to be red. I think white just uh, does a period, right? Yep. Yeah, white is fully done, where red is uh, maybe not so much. Let me turn it around a little bit. Yeah, see, that's in the shade right there, and that one's not, and it's still still white. So, yeah, maybe red's not the best choice to use on wheels. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It makes uh, orange. And uh, right now, guys, we cannot paint the bearings. We cannot paint the shocks. You can paint the seats, as you can see right there. There may be a few other items that you cannot paint. We'll figure those things out as we go along. Yep. Ink looks good. Pink looks fun from both sides, actually. <laughs> Yep. Pink is such a vibrant color in this game. I, I'm not really, uh, you know, a huge fan of the the pink in, in real life, but in the game, it's it's absolutely beautiful. So, let's see. What are you doing? Uh, green. It's a greenish blue. That looks fine from this side. What about the other side? It's an offshoot of this color. See, this side right here actually has different shades of green on. It, I guess because of the. You know the, the the shadows or something like that. You can see right there. There's a same thing with that one. That one has different shades of yeah, it's of kind bluish of bluish green. Yeah, it's brighter around that ring, and then a different color off of the ring. Yeah. All right. I'm Actually, gonna, I like that color. I'm gonna go ahead and load up uh, some new blocks and um, start building. I'm gonna start painting myself or painting, uh, you know, little designs here in the sand. Oh wait, we can't do that just yet, <laughs> guys. Why didn't you give us the abilities to paint the ground? What are you afraid that we are going to write or spell in this <laughs> game? <laughs> I want to be able to change the color of the trees and the blocks. That's really all I want to do. We haven't I mean, tried you... it on trees yet, but I'm pretty sure that it, it won't. Yeah, I haven't tried it on trees. I have tried it on block on, on rocks, but uh, as you can see right here, it's not working. There's some crops over here. We haven't tried it on crops yet, but again, I'm pretty sure that's not going to work either. Maybe, though. Maybe. But yeah, if you could have it where when I spray the ground, maybe instead of doing just like a straight line, because that would take forever to spray paint the entire ground, doing more like a paint spill so that it uh, does a area effect on the ground and in like a very like oil spilly kind of look to it. Yep. Like corn, man. We're supposed to be able to harvest that at some point down the road. And do something with it. Because you said they're going to add uh, a survival mode into this game, right? Yeah, we're going to have consumables at some point. Ah, oh, dang it. I dropped my mouse. All right. So, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start building something. 
Sorry, guys. I dropped my mouse there. That's why you guys were staring up at the ceiling, staring <laughs> up at the this the beautiful, beautiful uh, canopy that we have up there right above us. But yeah, I, I think they're going to make more of the world as time goes on be interactive. I think you're going to be able to chop trees down and be able to harvest that corn and be able to plant certain crops down in certain areas. And you know, I think once you start doing that, where you can actually start interacting with the environment, you're going to create a more lifelike environment, more you know, in-depth feel for the game itself. So yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how, how that progresses. Let's get up here so we can get a nice little overhead view of what's going on. Mm, not all of it you can see. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit uh, hidden inside the dirt. I would like to see, if at all possible, if, if that's the route they want to go in the game, a tool that allows you to even out the ground so that you can have that level format if you need it. But I do like the fact that right now it forces you to kind of allow the ground to dictate where and how you're building. So it has a more natural feel to it. But again, I think that should be part of the choice of the person who's making it. If they want to have nothing but flat land, you can do that as it is right now. You can make a flat land area that has no trees, no rocks, no nothing. It's just flat for as far as you can possibly see yeah, but until you reach the end of the map. It's not completely flat either. Oh, isn't it? No. Okay, so maybe they just don't want you to have that ability. Maybe they don't want you to have just completely flat land. Although, like I said, you know, I think it really should come down to the operator, the person who's making the, the map, whether they want it or not, because you can always add hills yourself by just adding bricks that go up in that kind of format and uh, give that look to it anyway. So if, if that's what they want down the road, I think you should let them have it. But yeah, I would love to be able to do like, you know, hills and, you know, gullies and maybe even a water tool so that you can have, you know, a river going through the middle of your town if you want to set that up. Maybe even a map editor that you have to do before you actually start. Again, this is getting like really complicated I was about stuff. To say, and you're asking maybe, for a lot of things. Yeah, you know, I, I'm one of those people, guys. I always ask for more than I'm getting, and just kind of see what you know, throw it at the wall and see what what sticks. But that may not be what they're trying to do with this game. But again, you know, there are ideas that if you're watching, if you're listening to these, and you're you know, you're like, oh, that that might actually be kind of interesting. Try it out. Definitely appreciate. It. I think there would be a lot of people out there. Who wouldn't mind trying a map editor when it comes to this game especially if you start getting into like water and being able to build stuff with water I, right now there's really no water on the map right i haven't seen any nope no water at all and even if there was water i'm pretty sure the mechanics of blocks being in water would be the same as blocks being in the air it wouldn't really uh you know make them float or anything like that but i, I did see one game I can't think of what it is called, like Nautica or Nautical something. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Subnautica? Yeah, that's it. That's coming out on Steam, and it kind of does what this game does, but for water. So maybe they don't want to go that route because there's already a game out there that's going to do it. But, uh, you know, I think they could integrate both of them together and do a, a very cool themed kind of uh, world, water, air, you know, airplanes. They haven't done that yet either. There's no aerodynamics in this game yet. There's no way to make wings that work or helicopters that really work. There's jets. You can go up in the sky. You can fly on a jet. And you could, I guess, make an airplane that was jet-powered that would fly around just fine. But until it gets to that point, you know, you, you don't have uh, helicopters. You don't have uh, propellers. You don't have um, wingspans that provide lift and kind of flex with the air and stuff like that. Again, yeah. getting into a completely different type of game altogether, but still within that universe. And I think that's eventually what these games are going to incorporate when they do the VRs and stuff like that, is they're going to have all those aspects rolled into one giant game that just says, here's the world, go create, you know? Kind of like it is in real life, but easier. Yeah. Because I can just throw a block down rather than having to put cement down that costs money and form it and wait for it to dry and hope I, I got the mix right. You know, like this game takes all of that, that guesswork out of there and, and lets Oops. you do what you need to do. Oops. Now, to give the, the people at home watching, what exactly would you uh, say you're doing without giving everything away? I am making a pillar. <laughs> okay, well, beyond the basic... <laughs> Of what you're actually doing, what, what would you say is um, 
is your next five steps? What are you doing right now? You're building a wall. You're doing a pillar to support what? Uh, bearing. And um, after you have the bearing, then you have the thing that is attached to the bearing. And then from there on, you have the thing that is uh, spinning on the bearing. Which is the thing we don't want to give away just yet. So you guys are <laughs> going to have to stay in the dark on this one for a little while. Now, there is one thing that we did notice with the paint gun. And it's something that I've noticed a while back with other blocks. Uh, not all the time, but it did happen quite a bit. Is that when you were putting another block down while somebody else is putting a block down, it stopped them from putting it down. Yeah. If that makes any sense to you guys. So if I'm over here, say I'm painting right here, and he's trying to put a block down, he's not able to. It actually stops him from being able to do it because I'm busy doing something. So I don't know if they mean that to be the case or if that's just kind of a weird, you know, offshoot of another problem that was already kind of going on in the game because of, uh, you know, coding or something along those lines. But it definitely is something that happens, so just kind of be aware of it. Let's see. Yeah. Nah, not that big. And I am just going to be painting the floor just for... For funds, for funsies, guys, for realsies, <laughs> for just realsies. to see uh, for realsies. Some of my uh, my nephew, <laughs> he used to uh, he used to say, actually, still does say quite a bit. He's real young, so he he comes up with some of the the strangest phrases, and that one just uh, it tickles me every time I hear him say. He's like, "For realsies, man." I'm like, "Okay, for realsies, <laughs> for realsies, dude." Because he gets so excited about video games, man. He, he reminds me so much of how I was when I was a kid. Except he gets to have, like, the luxury of having multiple systems that are out and some amazing games with amazing graphics and, and TVs in every room. You know, I make myself sound really old. But to be honest, guys, uh, you know, we, we didn't have any of that. Uh, we had Super Nintendo or Nintendo when it first came out. And we had arcades before that and... I miss the arcades. I really, really do. I would, I would love yeah. to be able to play arcades again, in, in that atmosphere. Basically, just, I don't miss paying a quarter apiece. But just think, they're growing up in the generation that will see VR in its fullest. That's well. I'm hoping so do I. I mean, I'm hoping I, you know, I got another 10, 15 years in me, and I'll be able to see, go to. But maybe I'm not, I won't, but gonna, I'm, hoping. I'm not saying we're that old. I'm just saying that they are going to. Um, live past us to see things that um, we never thought were able able to be possible. You know, but it's funny because technology is progressing so fast that in just a few years, the kids who are out there nowadays playing on like the, the Xboxes and the Playstations, they're going to be able to say, man, I remember when we had to play, you know, not on VR. Yeah. Right. And that's just going to be hilarious. Like, they're already to that point. I remember that back in the like, days I when we had to use a Kinect to do anything virtual reality. <laughs> right? I mean, it's going to get to that point already. And that's just, it's kind of hilarious. But in a uh, disturbing sort of way, it's just how fast it's moving. But, hey, man, I, I'm more than happy. I've been waiting so long for virtual reality. Uh, I don't know. Did you ever play those those uh, VRs back in the day in the uh, the malls that they used to have kind of set up? It would cost, like... I don't know, like seven or eight dollars yep. for five minutes or something, and yep. it was such a such a freaking awesome experience. Except it was just so so much a pale in comparison to what VR is now. Oh yeah, and VR now is not even close to what it's going to be in like ten years. So, yep, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the journey that it takes. I, you know, again. I've uh, I'm only 30, but I've already lived through several wars when it comes to <laughs> like console yeah, wars. Yeah. When it comes to like uh, you said that, that was, it's, I've lived through several wars. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, got World War Two and World War One. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, it's they had the the console wars to see who would win. Uh, you had uh, CD pluses and CD minuses that came out, and the, they 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 went through that route. They had HD versus Blu-ray and to see who won that one. And, you know, they had all these players that you could buy for lots of money, and people had to choose, like, which one are you going to buy? Because nobody can afford both. It's just ridiculous. And, you know, whoever bought the most and whoever had the most, it, it really comes down to whoever has the most content, I think, uh, oh, from yeah. what my experience has, has taught me. So whichever of these these uh, VR headsets tend to integrate the, the best technology as well as the 
the best uh, amount of content, period. Because I've seen games like, or the systems like the Lynx. I don't know if you ever played that one. It's, uh, it's a handheld version, kind of like the Game Gear yep. or the Game Boy. But the, the Lynx was ahead of its time, guys. It was lit up from inside, like all the handhelds are now. And this was back in the day when the Game Boy was black and white. No color on, the, no no lit up from the inside. If you took it outside, it had such a glare on it uh, and and no light that you could not see anything. Like it, it even came with uh, you could get the the attachments, the big giant freaking magnifying glass that you could put on top of it, and they would have little lights on there yep. to kind of give you a little bit better view of what's going on. And you know the the links, it had color, it had a long battery life, it had uh, lit up from the inside, it had some really cool games, but not enough of them. And then you had the Game Gear, which was color but not lit up from the inside. Big freaking mouse batteries. I'm talking about like the size of an actual rat as your little extender mouses or uh, batteries that you could have. And they only lasted for like 30 minutes, and they took like 12 hours to charge up. They're nowhere near as good as the lithium oh, yeah. batteries we have nowadays. But, you know, it was it was funny. Like, though, that's what we had. And then you had the Game Boy. And the Game Boy was black and white. It had... Uh, decent amount of batteries but it wasn't rechargeable game gear was rechargeable links was rechargeable uh the game boy you had to keep buying batteries for well, the game and boy, which one which one won the game boy was um it was green green and and gray it wasn't really a real black and white but yeah no it wasn't color though nobody nobody would say that was color back then no. But, I mean, uh, which one of those won it was the freaking game boy the, the worst out of all of them yep. as far as um uh, as far as hardware, but why, why did it win? Because it just had better games yep. and it had more of them. Tetris, man. Tetris. Yeah, Tet Tetris is a killer for any system. Like, you don't have that one on there, you're probably not going to survive. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, this, the Game Gear kind of concentrated more on sports games and it was just a variation of just weird stuff that wasn't uh, really here nor there when it came to, you know, actually choosing what they needed to go with. And as far as the, uh, the links went, I think they had a, a max of like seven or eight games for that. Yeah. one. And one of the games on that system was my absolutely favorite. Uh, it's called chips. You can play it on the, uh, on the internet. Now they have little websites where you can, you know, just play it directly off of the website. It is a fantastic little game. It's a uh, little computer chips, little CPUs that you have to collect as a little guy. And it was more of a, puzzle slash adventure game because there were these snapping little teeth you know like those little party favors that you can wind up and little teeth with the gums or whatever kind of going around the map trying to eat you and they'd be trapped by doors that you'd have to unlock with different color keys and there was ice that you could get little skates to uh, to walk across instead of skidding across and water that you had to go over and get the right boots for and uh, you wanted to pick up all those those chips before you get in the level and sometimes those mouths would be trapped inside a square of chips, and as soon as you picked one up, those things would come busting out of that area <laughs> and try to get you. And so you'd have to run around the map and try to try to you know drag them behind you in such a way that you could go back several times and pick up a couple of chips here and there, and then go to the the exit of the the map. But it was a really really fun game. It had like 150 levels or something on it, and it was just kind of challenging. And it was just a unique take on something I had never seen before. You know, Mario and stuff like that, those are definitely great games. Zelda, everybody loves those games. And I think that's why they won, is they just had more content than any of the other ones that people actually liked. Whereas, um, you know, Sony, you know, uh, Sega, Sega seemed to just put out whatever. Like, it, it didn't have, uh, they're almost one of the reasons why the consoles went out altogether. They had no... Uh, you know, filter on what people were doing with it, whereas Nintendo was very, very strict oh, yeah. on, on games. So almost too much, though, and they still are very, very strict on what they do with it. And that's one of the reasons they survived is because they were that strict. But I like to see a happy medium, kind of like the Xbox now. The Xbox has it where, hey, you want to put out a game, you're more than welcome to. However, if that game sucks and people constantly say it sucks and gives it a bad rating, they will take it off and say this is no longer available on there. So they do have a little bit of that, uh, you know, uh, monitoring of the system itself to make sure that it never gets to that saturation point like it used to where, you know, the one game everybody compares it to that, that really did something that uh, that shouldn't have is that E.T. game. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, it's horrible. You guys could do a search for that one. You'll get a gazillion results <laughs> showing you that game. Absolutely one of the worst design built 
uh, executed uh, storyline, everything, everything about that was you, just like, here, let me just throw up on a keyboard and then sell it to people. You didn't like that game, it just, You didn't like that game? It, it didn't work. Nobody <laughs> liked know, that game. It didn't work. You couldn't even beat it. You couldn't even beat it. It was never even finished to the point where you could actually beat that game. But it wasn't. It wasn't like that game was anything different, and that was the problem. That it was, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, guys. It was just the game <laughs> that represented all the other games that were just like it, that were just as much uh, complete garbage, and uh, it it just sucked. And those things ended up in the landfills, and it was just it was a horrible, horrible time for consoles. But you know, we got past it, and I think with this new VR thing, it's probably going to be somewhat the same way is uh, whichever one comes up with the best games. And that's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really hard to say who's going to do that because a lot of these big manufacturers like Bungie and stuff like that, they get paid a lot of money to put out a game for one specific console. But more and more of them I see nowadays are saying, yeah, we'll do it for consoles, but when it comes to computers, we're going to put it out there. Like We'll put it out for the Xbox only, but computers as well. And we'll put it out for the PlayStation only, but computers as well. And the VRs, they seem like they're hooked up to computers. Yep. So that's going to be very, very difficult to get game manufacturers, I think, to stop doing computer only or stop doing, uh, you know, just uh, consoles and go to maybe computer only. I, I haven't seen any game company out there that just does computer only. Yeah. You know, they, they always do console, one console or all consoles and then computer as well. So I, I, I kind of like that, that uh, trend because computers – have always just been this kind of standalone thing that doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily stand alone, but doesn't really fall into any category that game manufacturers, as far as consoles things, are too concerned about. They just know that computers are always there. They're always going to be there. We're not going to try to limit, you know, what games can be on them because everybody has one, everybody uses one, and it, it's just the way it yeah. is. So um, I have a lot of hope for the VR systems in regard for just being completely open because I. I love Ratchet and Clank series. I absolutely love those games. I love the the Jack and Dexter series. Unfortunately, when I'm picking out a console, most of the time the PlayStation wasn't one that won. Like I, I went with the Xbox more than anything else until this last one, the Xbox uh, One, the X Bone, uh, with all the DRM crap that they were going to put on there and online stuff that they wanted to put on. Uh, I went ahead and pre-ordered the uh, the PlayStation instead, but the the PlayStation that I got was broken. It didn't work when I first got it, and I just got my money back. I never went back and got another one because, uh, uh, you know, game companies, man, yep. you, you tick me off sometimes. And if you're not going to give me a good product the first time when I pre-order it uh, because you're rushing it out the door, then uh, then bite me because <laughs> I'm not going back and giving you my money not for six, $700. Dude, like, take the extra two months. I can wait. I can wait. So can other, other people. They're, I know they say they can't. They're outside waiting two, three weeks uh, in the in the cold to be able to buy that game system. But, dude, trust me. We can wait. Just give us a product that works, that I don't have to worry about three rings of death on it uh, or any of this other garbage that I have to send it back just so that you can say you got it out on time. Yeah. Or you got it out a month before the other guys did. I mean, it really, really doesn't... Uh, doesn't fly with me anymore. I'm tired of that. I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. So that's why I kind of stick with computers because I don't have to worry about that. If your game is broken when it first comes out, uh, then I just don't play it. I get my money back for it. But I still have my, my computer. The computer still works. You're not selling me a console because I already have the console. I already have my computer. And I can watch movies on it. I can do all the other stuff on it too. So I, I kind of like doing that uh, that route now. But I don't know. What, what about you? How do you feel about it? Do you like... Uh, how they rush the uh, the consoles out, or? Well, I gotta say, I'm not a console person myself. Uh, the only game that I ever would have gotten a console for was Red Dead Redemption, and um, because of the fact that Rockstar never decided they were going to make it for a computer, and then I decided, you know what? If Rockstar doesn't want to make it for a computer, I don't need to. I don't need to play their their games. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's that's usually how people. We'll decide it, you know. Like if you're gonna be that kind of butthead about it, and not uh, produce it for the computer, then we'll just we just won't yeah. buy it. I mean, it's you you gotta go on the idea that most games are gonna look better, run better on a computer anyway. Why would you not go with the computer? Um, so I ended up. That's how I ended up going. Is um. Well, I mean, I I can see the advantages to playing a console. Like for one, the console. 
puts together everything you need in one spot and you don't have to build a computer yourself. You don't have to go out and buy a computer and find one that works with that system. They just all work with it. You don't get any lag. Yeah, it looks better on computers and you know, I'm definitely a computer boy myself, but I do see the point of a console. It's kind of nice to be able to just pick it up and play and not have to worry about any of that stuff, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I tend to uh, I tend to like both. You know, I, I, I like the advantages of both, but they're just too expensive nowadays. I mean, they're, they're about the same price as a state-of-the-art computer anyway, so I'm just like, I'll go with the computer. Yep. But if you had to pick a console, which one would you pick? Um, I'd probably get the Steam console. Ooh, really? Yeah, and I, I haven't even researched it at all. Uh, just because of the fact that I know that it would run everything that I have or own on Steam. It's not that I like Steam. Uh, I tolerate it because of the fact that um, I don't have to keep computer keys around or game keys around with me all the time. Um, See, I just hold that against the the game manufacturer for doing all that DRM crap. Like, I, I just want to be able to buy a game that I can play. I don't I don't need to be able to, or I shouldn't need to, I should say, have to put that stuff in there. I remember when they first started doing that, you remember the stupid keys that they would give you, which is like a scroll wheel, and they would have different pictures yeah. on it, and it would say, line up the monkey's head with uh, the skull and tell me what other picture is set up in there, and that would be your little password and stuff yeah. like that. Those were so annoying because, I mean, unless you were very responsible with your game, come on, guys, just, just admit it, your kids... You know, we, we weren't that responsible with our games. Those things would be the first thing that went missing. So we'd lose those and not be able to play our games. So you'd have to go online to find another one. Even though you bought the game, you still couldn't get into it. So you had to go find somebody who uploaded that picture and find out what the, the code was. And everybody else who didn't buy the game and just downloaded it was doing the exact same thing. So those never work. DRM stuff never works. If somebody wants to get around it, they're going to get around it. The only thing you can do is make it difficult enough that... Most people just say it's not worth it, yep. but hackers never get to that point. They're like, it's worth it, period. It's always going to be worth it. If i got to spend 50 hours hacking the thing, it's going to be worth it for me. So you're never going to stop it. So just give it up already, guys. Just stop doing it because you're just annoying the rest of us who actually pay for the game. I mean, that's why I stopped using Photoshop. Photoshop got to the point where I, I, I couldn't even freaking install it on computers that I wanted to install it on without having to call them up and say, hey, I want to install this on a new computer. Can you go ahead and disable the other three on there? Oh, well, let me ask for your social security, your name, your your blood type, and you know, 15 <laughs> other thousand things that we have no right to know the information about. Just so that uh, you can use the program you paid money for. Yeah. You know, like it's ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I get away from all that DRM stuff, which is why I kind of lost interest in the Command and Conquer series, which I absolutely loved, guys. I love the Command and Conquer series, and when they came out with that. That one you had to play online. The same thing with SimCity. SimCity was another series that I absolutely loved. And then they did that whole thing online. Yep. And I think the first, what, two weeks, three weeks that they did that, it was such a debacle because nobody could get on. It was crashing all the time. And you were losing your saved games. And I, I watched all the reviews of the game. And it definitely made me never wanting to play it because of the, the reviews that I watched, the actual Let's Plays and stuff of people just having horrible, horrible, nightmarish issues of the DRM stuff. And none of that needed to be there. It was just there so they could say, you know, people weren't stealing the money from us and and, and the people who are going to steal the money from you are still going to steal the money from you. So, you know, I'm definitely against that DRM stuff. But I don't really see VR doing too much of that, to be honest. Yeah. Because I think a lot of game companies have learned and they're just like, you know, we're, we're going to we're gonna settle down and, and kind of, uh, you know, I mean, with the Xbox is the, the primary example of why I say they kind of learn because... That one, they, they were going to go with all of that stuff, all that DRM, you know, garbage. And the fans were like, well, then we just won't buy your your product. And they didn't. It, it worked. It worked. They fired the, the president, the vice president, whatever he was. And the company made a, a full, completely, uh, you know, 180 degree turn on that one and said, we're not doing that anymore. And that's not the way our company is going to be run. So your your voice matters, guys. If you see something, especially in games that you do not like or in any part of your life that you do not like your dollar is a vote for that company a vote for that product and if you decide you don't like that you can definitely uh just don't buy it so is that not connecting uh, no, no. uh so if you were looking at this right now would you not think this is some kind of goal or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, kinda, it, does, 
It does actually look like it. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we created a new sport, guys. Yep. Got to get it in the hole. Oh. Just got to make it through. Uh, Just got to make it through. Can we not roll it anymore? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in the middle. And we'll, we'll have a game. But it won't let me. It won't let me move it. Um, what if? What if we get rid of the corners? Where are you seeing it at? Right. Oh, you're holding it. That's yeah. why. <coughs> All right. Get rid of the corners. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we can do that. Oh, that's what you said to do. No, I was gonna say I don't know if that would work. If it would help it roll a little oh, bit more. Probably not. But that's all right. There we go. Now it doesn't look like a Rubik's cube. All right, how we do this? Uh, whoever gets it to the other side, I think you're gonna win this All one because right, I get a little minute, bit lag. Before we do this, before we do this, let's go ahead and make a um, a little goal on each. You make your goal however big you want it. Uh, don't make it too small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go up right from the screen line right here, and then um. And you went from the other one. Okay, I'll do the same thing. Right from this line. There we go. There's our goal. Let's see. Get rid of this up here. But, uh, yeah, I was watching one game on the VR system that just looked absolutely amazing. They were, like, actually ducking behind objects. And it, it took into account, like, which direction you were leaning when you duck. So nowadays when I play games and, you know, I'm trying to peek around a corner in like Halo or something like that and I feel like an idiot because you can't do that in the the game, when the VR thing comes out, that's definitely going to be an option. Like you can peek your head around it instead of having to actually, you know, go out there full body and just, uh, you know, get wrecked. Yeah. There Not we even go. on the same... So this was not our intended. No, no, uh, but now we we have to do it. Is that big enough, or is go. yours bigger? Uh, I think mine's one bigger than yours. Okay. Actually, yeah. One bigger. Yeah, but that's because I want to give you some space, and I know you're you're lagging out on your side, so I guess I want to give you a little bit easier time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm the one lagging out on my end. All right, let me go ahead and Let's go paint my goal up way. as well. Oh, yeah. Check it out, guys. We are going to play a new sport. In fact, let me see how well this thing rolls out. Oh, yeah. Better not make a goal. Woo, baby. Better not make a goal on me. Holy crap. Look how far that went, guys. We need a copy and paste tool, man. We need like seven or eight of these things. Yeah, we do. We can play, oh, man, can you imagine if we got together a whole bunch of friends, put them out here on this thing, and created a, like, a air hockey tournament or yeah. something? Oh, yeah. I think uh, I'm going to like this game. I'm going to like the fact that you can do a lot of things with it. Let me uh, let me try hitting this thing again. Oh, it keeps going off to the right. I wonder why it goes to the right instead of the left. Oh, man, that's, that's not easy to get through that goal. It's close. Not easy. Your goal is so small. What? So small, man. No, it's not. Compared to mine, it is. Mine's nice and open. Plenty of space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Get some practice in. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, oh no, no, Oh, yeah, no, you know, no, that's no. that's how we should make it, where we can't go to the other person's side. We can't cross the line. Yeah, yeah, I like that rule. <laughs> if it goes out of bounds. Oh, you know what? Make it like pool. If it goes out of bounds, you get to pick it up and put it anywhere on your side. That could work, yeah. Any, anywhere on your side when it goes right, out of so bounds. We need to put it in the middle. I think it's right there. That's perfect. And we start out right in the in the middle. All right. Three. Oh, hey, 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 now. 
<laughs> oh no. Okay, so what happens if it goes out of bounds because I caused it to because then it I hit get me? Control over. Because you do. Okay, so you get that one because it hit me and it went out. Kind of like a basketball rule thing. All right. All right. Get my see. hammer back out. I'm trying to see good spot here. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. It's not out of bounds yet. No. Oh. oh, yeah. Nice hit. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, oh no. Holy crap. Oh, no, it's not out of bounds nope. yet. Nope, not yet. Mm. No, it is. Now it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me change up my bar before I put this down uh, because I want to make sure my hammer is right next to where my lift is. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna be using those yeah. quite a bit depending on uh, how bad our accuracy is. This is a cool game, so if you guys want to come out and join us, we got a nice little air hockey tournament, uh, basketball oh, slash. Did uh, you notice that? What? You can block. How do you block? Oh, with the yeah. second one? I oh, cool. I wonder if you can... Um, well, let's try it real quick. Uh, let's see. Can I hit with that? No, no, but if I if you shoot it at me and I block it... Oh! Uh, well, way, way, way off to the side. Did a nice little, uh, did a nice little amount of damage to it, though. Got it way out yeah. there. I need to start right. turning the, uh, how I'm looking at it. All right. Oh, boy. All right. Somebody's guarding there. Maybe. Uh, oh. Didn't quite go out. Oh. Now it did. <laughs> yep. Jeez, this is, uh, this is fun. I like it. I, I like the design of the the ball, too. But I think what we should have is, like, three of them. Yeah. We should make three of them. That way it'd be harder to keep track of what's going on. And which oh. ones, and you'd have to decide whether you wanted to go out of bounds to get one that went out, or stay in and defend against the other three, kind of like a dodgeball type thing. Just think if you had two people on on each side. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Or three or four. Oh. I mean, that's what you need. Oh crap! Ah, uh, that one's actually right in the center. No, that's not moving. Yep, you knocked it out. Yeah. Oh, did I? I'm still hitting it on it my went screen. Went around the corner. Oh, uh, you might want to get back in the center. <laughs> bring it on, bring it on, oh, bring it on. Oh, oh way over my head. Oh, it Holy almost made crap. it. It You're almost made it. So close, man. So close. Uh, that's not moving. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Nice hit, though. What is it with... Yeah, some of them go really far. You know what I think it was is I ran up to it. <laughs> I ran up to it and swung onto it. So maybe that's the trick is we need to run up to these things instead of just walking yep. up to them. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Oh, no. Right right in front of me. Block it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I blocked it. That is it. Need to, need to run up to these things. Oh, oh. oh that, didn't, that didn't go anywhere. It did. did it? Oh, oh crap. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, one point. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't believe you made that. Right, uh, let me that get a block nuts. on my uh, thing. And uh, I'll put a point up. Oh, that's what we need. We need a scoreboard. Let's make a scoreboard real quick. Point. Let's do... <laughs> we, now we got we got to do a scoreboard the right way. We got to do a real big one. Um, have like a blackboard or something? Yeah, yeah. And we need to make it uh, automatic too. So that we can, we can click a oh, button. Oh, we... And it uh, and it changes things or something. Okay, we can do that. Like uh, game to say ten, something like that, or four or three. Yeah, and you know what it could be is instead of doing an actual um, number that pops up, maybe just have squares in there that either uh, pop through or don't yep. pop through. Kind of like in um, table hockey or something like that. You have the little little notches that you get to move down on one side or the other. Oh, you know what? Let's do that instead. Let's do the notches. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a notch on there just so I can see what you were talking about. Well, you know, you have the, the line, the little thing that they, they sit around, and then you put the little uh, circular piece that goes around it, and all you do is slide it from one end down to the other. 
You see what I'm saying? So we'll keep going out with this, and then we'll create a... Uh, let's see, how am I going to do this? I need to get up there somehow. Let me use uh, my lift. So we'd use a piece of wood that's not connected to it, and... Uh, oh, and have that and have it go around. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go down the the row on either side and have, you know, five or six of these on each side and we can either just push them with the uh, the hammer or have it uh, automatically go down to the okay. other side with with some kind of uh, activation switch or something like that. Um, and I don't think I can get underneath it to... Uh, let me see. There we go. That's fine, actually. We don't need two. Just do one on either side. We'll have to make yours a little bit longer because I think mine's uh, a few blocks longer. All right, so we need pistons, or not pistons, but uh, controllers. Uh, I need a mm, block. I think it's okay, I think this will work. Um, well, we need to, what you need to do is you need to build on top of it. Is it loose? That's what I was uh, just checking right there. I went ahead and destroyed any of the blocks that were connected to it and told it to connect to the ones above it, but it does seem like it's still connected to All it right, somehow. so, uh, one second. in there just like that oh, we want to do th oh, that's the wrong block I got the wood block on purpose take that take that take that now that's on there now you need to attach new ones on the bottom of that make sure you're attaching them directly to that wood See, it's it's too low. I can't get underneath because I don't have a crouch button. Okay. I'll let you get that one. There you go. Now when I hit it. Yep. Oh, it's off. Uh oh, it went off. That's all right. We can put that back on pretty easy. Let's do this right there. Slide it up. Right there. You had it. Right there. And I'll just add one more piece. Yeah, so hitting it with the hammer is not the way to go on that one. We'll definitely have to use some kind of other force to push it forward. I mean, we can walk right into that one, obviously, a little bit. How are you going to pull that one forward, you know? Um, I have no clue. I'm working on an idea. Well, let's go ahead and stop the video here, yeah. guys, and uh, we'll come back, and I I'm going to create some more of these blocks while you do that, so we'll have some other balls to play with. We'll have a, a set of them over here on the side or something. That way, if one of them goes really far out, we don't have to run after it every single time. But Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out AC Gamer. He has all kinds of content for you guys to watch, and um, thank you guys for watching. And we will catch you all next this time. This is Cypher Deck. And I'm AC Peace Gamer. Out.